Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm really excited about this one because we're going to be talking about solar. Now you might notice that I'm at my tiny Texas home and normally I talk about my tiny Texas home on my tiny Texas living channel. However, today because we're talking about solar, there's something that I think we could all kind of glean from the project that I'm currently working on. Not only can you use solar when you're traveling like we do most of the time here on the channel, but also if you are stationary. So today I have partnered with Renegy to show you how Renegy panels can not only work while we're traveling, but also while we're sedentary. And I think this will help for a lot of you guys who have talked about that you're interested in maintaining life on the road while also possibly having a base camp. So buckle up, Buttercup, it's about to be fun. I'm packing up a whole bunch of stuff, so it is a mess in my tiny home. But with that said, my parents just went to the local Lowe's. They picked up some concrete, and we're going to start off by putting together a concrete pad so that we can erect this really neat thing for the solar panels. Now, typically, if you were in a van, you would have to have some kind of like roof rack or something to affix to and it would look something like this however just because you have a roof rack on your van that's not where it ends you also have to plug in your cables you have to have an inverter you have to have a battery system and that is something that allows you to have power from place to place or you can have like I have set up in my van where I have a Renogy solar panel that then has a wire that runs in and I can plug it directly into power stations which have all those things already locked in into one. However, have you ever thought about what you could do with that if you had a stationary location? Well, today, that's where we're gonna start. We're gonna pour a pad so that we can affix something to hold the panels first. And that's where this story is gonna begin. Thanks to Renegy, we are going to have a lot of solar that's gonna help me out here at base camp. And the reason why we decided we wanted to do this was because if you followed along for a while, you've known that I've not only evaded a tornado, but I've had a lot of power outages here as a result of just Texas being Texas. So why not go with a trusted brand that we already love with van life and turn it into something that could be bigger than just van life. This will help quite a bit. But also, again, I wanted to share it with you guys because I think you can see the versatility of the panels. So if, for example, you do start out doing van life and you decide you no longer want to do it, you can use those same panels for something like this at a stationary location. And I think that that's really awesome. So with that said, let's go see what dad's up to. He got the tractor out and it is time. <laughs> You can see first and foremost dad is going to be digging a hole so that he can put forms in so we can have the concrete nice and shored up so that it will be able to hold what it is now i'm going to be using a variety of different items for this and so if you're interested in any of these items that are going to be in this video or in any of the information about the solar panels please check the description below because we have a rotating piece that's going to actually have the solar panels on it we have batteries that we're going to use to hold and pull in that power, just like you would in a van. And we have, of course, the Renogy setup. Now this is a Renogy setup that again, could be used for your van or it could be used for home. And we're thinking kind of that if we can get this set up where we can flip a switch and use this power for powering our outdoor lights or for potentially powering our Christmas lights, that would be super great. But more so if the power goes off, we wanna be able to use this solar to potentially run the well so that we won't be without water. Now, if you have never lived in the country before, you, you might not know how a well works, but without power, it can't draw the water up. So even though you might be able to have a little bit of reserve that's already left in there, after that is gone, it's just, there's, there's no more. So it's not like a city where it can go ahead and push through. So we wanted to be able to hook in to potentially power the well if possible. And so that's kind of why we're doing this, not just for you know safety and protection, having a little extra light, but also having it for actual functioning things. And because of that, it's gonna take quite a bit of power. So we have quite a few batteries. Okay, the hole's dug. Now dad's gotta make sure it's the right size and everything to be able to hold the weight of the panels. And then we're gonna get started on the rest of this, but it's pretty interesting to see this. He's flattening out the sides a little bit here with this. So it'll be more square, so it'll hold better. And it'll be easier to put all of the reinforcement in there. That's a huge difference between putting solar on your van and putting solar into your space. If you're using one of these arms that moves to be able to directionalize, you're gonna have to pour concrete. If you're putting it on your roof, it's going to have to have something to fix it, very similarly to a van. 
So those are kind of your two options for doing it whenever you're at an actual sticks and bricks. Now, of course, on a van, you have to come up with some kind of rack to hold it. And it has to be super secure so it can be bolted in so it doesn't move. A lot of people have racks that they have purchased and those are available on all sorts of websites. You can also have them custom done. And so those are your options for actually placing the solar when it comes to either a house or a van. So that's that's kind of that. But there's, there's a lot more to this. So we're just getting to phase one. So securing is, is the first step. Okay, now that he pulled stuff off the edges, he's gonna go ahead and scoop it out. Now let's talk about another thing that's different between setting up a solar system at like a house and setting up a solar system on your van. Setting up a solar system on your van might be your first time to set up any kind of solar. It's starting to rain here, so I don't know that we're gonna get a concrete pour today. But with that said, we might. Who knows, maybe it'll stop. It's Texas after all. But whenever you are setting up the solar on your van, it's about getting enough power to power all the things that you need on the road. And when you're at a sticks and bricks, your power needs are gonna be exponentially more because your appliances use a lot more power. So I do still suggest having things that you could have in a van in your home, like some form of backup refrigeration that doesn't pull a lot of power. Having an alternative cooking method so you're not having to pull power in order to cook. Those are all very important things. Now, with a solar system at your house, you can have enough solar to do all of that. However, it's going to take a lot of batteries to do. Whenever you're in a van, a lot of times people use one or two batteries and that's how they get all of their power. However, at a home, you almost have to double or triple that in order to have enough to power just your basic things because they aren't designed to be more energy efficient. So you have to keep that in mind when you're putting in your solar system. It's not just something that is a one-stop shop hey, I'm gonna do this exactly like I did it for the van. You have to think about outside of the box, how much power are you consuming and what things do you have that are gonna help you limit some of the pull if you do need it. Now, if you're using this as a full-time power source, you're gonna to have to load down with batteries. If you're using this for a supplementary power source, like I will, you don't have to put quite as much into it, but even that, I'm trying to like analyze how much does everything pull in my house? I know for a fact I wouldn't be able to run my stove, for example, off of this because it is a very high ticket item. However, I could potentially use my small air fryer that is in my van to cook with. So it's a give and take. You have to figure it out though. You have to do your numbers. And the best way to do that is to start reading boxes. Whenever you purchase something, look to see how much power it actually pulls. That is the best tip that you can use for anything regarding solar. Okay, yesterday we were able to get the form set for the concrete. However, it started raining on us, so we weren't able to do more. But today is the day where we get the actual concrete poured for the pad so that we can start to get ready to position our solar. Again, solar can be used in a variety of different ways. I was never a big solar person before I started van life, but van life kind of swayed me on that because I see how important it can be, not only to be on the road, I literally survive using solar, but also whenever we're here, I see how frequently power can be kind of a problem. So the more that I've learned, the better that I feel about doing something like this. And I feel more confident with it because of van life. So, you know, a lot of people make my entire story about the van because that's when you guys have come along. But in all reality, in my very multifaceted life, there's a lot of different parts that teach me things each time that I either get in the van and go somewhere or do something, not just the brain wrinkles from museums, but also the act of the physical learning to survive without. And I think that that's something that we could all learn and it really can be super helpful. So. With that, I need to get a hat because it is hot, hot, hot outside and it is bright, bright, bright and I need shoes too. So just in some scrubby clothes that won't matter if I get them messed up by the concrete and I might have to replace my sleep shirt because this has been my sleep shirt for summer because it's so thin, but you know, that's, that's neither here nor there. We can work on that. I might wear the sombrero today. It's a bit big. This is the one that Riley was wearing in uh, the rodeo. I think it's not gonna work though. I think it's too big. Okay, I gotta work on this. I gotta figure this out. Okay, this one should work. Um, I'll just pull my hair back. That way I can see. I'll put some sunglasses on. That'll help. Okay, there's the hole and dad built the box basically. I helped him along with my mom, but he knows what he's doing. So this is gonna be sturdy and safe. It takes quite a bit of distance into the ground to really hold it. So now it's time to take all of these and to use this to make our concrete. Oh, help, help. Okay. On 
this first little bit, my dad's kind of showing me what needs to be where so I can understand it because I've never poured concrete before. So we're learning as we go. And that's one of the things I really enjoy about working with my parents is they have the expertise that I might not. And so if you don't know how to do something, don't be afraid to ask people because you can learn from them. So he just showed me kind of how to judge the concrete. Now we have a lot of bags to go, so I'm going to be working on this with him for a while. But he's currently filling it up and he was showing me even how much to fill it up before you put it in and how long it takes for the concrete to set up. So cool knowledge. Okay, so that's kind of how it works. You put the bag in, you put the water in, you tumble it, and then you pour it over into it. And now we know what to do. So since we know what to do, I'm gonna go and put you guys away and I'm gonna get to work on this. This is one step closer to having solar. Okay, we let the concrete sit and it is now ready for us to install the actual rotating arm. The rotating arm is gonna be super cool and I think it's gonna be really neat because it's gonna track the sun kind of across the sky. Now, in order to do this, it started off with my dad using power tools to drill into the concrete, something I would never trust myself to do. And in order to anchor it, you have to have a pretty substantial hole there. But then you also have to take a compass and figure out which direction it's going to be actually going into the direction of. You want it to work best with your sun. So we learned a few things. The compass that comes with it is very nice, but at the same time, when it makes contact with the metal, it kind of skews it a little bit. So I would definitely suggest pointing it away from the metal so that you can get the best possible read. With that said, I am in some pretty scrubby clothes because we're going to get a little bit dirty and rough today. So here we go. This is the next phase of solar. Starting the project took a little time with having to not only allow the cement to cure before drilling pilot holes for the anchors. Following this, we were able to align and secure the base of the rotating eco-worthy stand before working to attach the connecting pieces. This step was relatively easy using a locking washer, a regular washer, and a bolt. After securing the base, we began the assembly using the instructions provided. Okay, so this is the single axis solar track controller, and you can see this is by EcoWorthy. And so this is what's going to make it be able to track the sun, basically. So they have a nice little book here. Everything came included. One thing I will say is it doesn't give you all of the instructions for what size to drill, but also what size to tighten down. So those are things that you kind of have to figure out. And thank goodness we have a dad for that because he kind of figured it out. Otherwise I would be spinning my wheels. Now they do have all of the different pieces marked, however, in each of the individual bags. So it tells you which ones that you're supposed to use in which order. It just doesn't tell you the whole base drill space. So it's still great and it's very helpful. And the instructions that they have are very thorough. However, that was just one thing I wanted to add to this so you guys would understand that yes, you can do this, but you have to be a little creative. Over to it right here. Uh -huh. It's one of them wipes over there. I need to go grab one of these. Surely it doesn't have tools inside, so you have to provide your own tools, which that's fine. But also knowing which tools to use is kind of problematic because they don't have the sizing of what tools you need. So dad has a very extensive tool set. So this wouldn't be something that you tackle if you're expecting them to send everything in one piece. So that's kind of the other thing. The instructions do have pictures on them to make it a little bit easier for you to assemble this. That is helpful. However, again, they don't have the tools. So keep that in mind. Okay, dad has one here. So now it's time to tighten down. Each piece is labeled clearly with large letters, which correspond with the instructions. In addition, each packet of brackets, bolts and washers are labeled to make this easier. It took two people in order to be able to stabilize pieces during assembly because of the movement of the balance of the arm. However, it could be done by a single person with a little creativity. Okay, the wind's getting up a little bit. We may have some rain, so we're not sure that we're gonna be able to put the panels on. We're gonna try, but we're not sure. Uh, but we're getting this thing set up. It's doing really, really well. We have now the hydraulics on it, and 
uh, just a couple more pieces to go. So all in all, this is the delivery system again for the solar. And this is by EcoWorthy. EcoWorthy has a variety of different kinds of these and they're all very handy. Again, it's gonna track from east to west every day and then it can kind of swivel a little bit also to be able to further get the best amount of sun. It's kind of funny because while we're out here, there were a couple bunnies that started running around in circles. So now they're resting. So one is outside and one is under the car. <laughs> Interesting stuff. Okay, we're going to be able to get some of the solar on there. So it's gonna work out pretty well. Uh, right now, we're just trying to get the Renogy solar panels on here. These are huge panels. So these are much larger than the ones on my van. But at the same time, they're gonna produce a lot more power for us. Now with this arm that tracks, from EcoWorthy, it's going to really work well with the Renogy panels because it is set up so that it can use larger style panels like these. Now, the panels that my dad has on his van are more similar to the ones that we're putting up at my house. So mine is only a tiny little 100 watt. It works well for what I need, but for the house, because we're gonna be needing some more power, we decided to go a little bit more industrial with this. And thanks to Renogy, we were able to do this. Now I'll be sharing an entire video of the solar setup and how it works very soon so you guys can see how we're implementing it. We're going to get it set up and then we're going to use it for a little bit so we can fully talk about how it cycles through, how it stores in the batteries and things like that. I just thought I, that would be a great way for us to kind of follow up so that you guys could have a better understanding of how solar could be used not only for your travel vehicle but also for your home. So if you're a homesteader, you want to get a tiny home or even if you have just a little property that you want to make sure that you can keep things like the well and the lights on if you have a power outage. These are great for preparedness. Mm -hmm.